the kind that says if the weather is clear. Can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do. If he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I mean that. Thank you. Tell me, what are you making the choice? Has he got a place for the trap game? 
<laughs> you don't know yet. The heat is on. <laughs> Nick is having trouble finding a place. Well, tell him I'm loaded and ready for action. I have supplied 5,000 potatoes. Fine, jeez. Where did you acquire it? I collected the wood on my father. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, everyone's looking for some action. I wish Nick could find a place for the game soon. Lieutenant Brannigan! Mr. South Street, you know Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A oh, pleasure. <laughs> and you guys see Nathan Detroit? <laughs> and um, which Nathan Detroit is that? The Nathan Detroit that's been running a floating crap game and getting away with it by changing the spot every night. <laughs> Why are you telling us this, Your Honor? Because you're the two bums that work for Detroit and rustle up customers for his crap game. We are? Yeah. Oh. Well, you can tell him this for me. I know he's trying to find a spot. Well, he's not going to find a spot because everyone knows Brandon is breathing down there and then. I'm having terrible trouble. I can't find a spot for the game. Look out of that lousy Brandon again, and I can't. Is there something wrong, Mr. Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lieutenant Brannigan, I heard you didn't think we were talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. <laughs> I was just having a chat with your colleagues about your crafting. I imagine you're having trouble finding a spot. Well, you would know the fact that you now have to live off your own salary. <coughs> Nikki, did you find a place for the game? What does that cop want from me? What does he think I am? Sex media? I'm really running a crap game for those who are looking for a little action. Is that a crime? Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, did you find a place for the game? Is the game still on? Did I find a place? Did I? Yeah, fellas, I found a place. We're going to have our crap game tomorrow night at the Radio City Music Hall. Well, how are you going to fix the others? <coughs> I tried all the usual places, the back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. Nathan, you once said something about the Biltmore garage? I went to the Biltmore garage, spoke to Joey Biltmore himself. He said I could have the place if I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He won't take my marker. Ah, your marker's no good, huh? What are you talking about? A marker isn't just a piece of paper that says I owe you $1,000, sign Nathan Detroit. A marker, it's like a pledge on which a guy cannot welch. It's like not saluting the flag. My marker's as good as gold, only Joey don't think so. It don't seem possible. Me without a livelihood. Why, I've been running a crack game since I was a juvenile delinquent. Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. You know what today is, right? Today's our 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah! We've been engaged for 14 years. <laughs> 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 the town is up to here with high players. Look, the Greeks in town. Brandy Bottle Bates. Brandy Slim. I know, I know, but where can I have the game? So build more garage.
Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson's in town. <coughs> Sky Masterson. He's the highest roller of them all. Higher than the Greek, even higher. But why do you think they call him Sky? <coughs> why, once they watched him bet ten seats on a cockroach. And another time, he wouldn't take penicillin when he was sick, because he bet he can get his temperature to go up all the way to 104. Well, did it? Did it? He got so lucky, he went all the way up to 106. Good old Scott. <laughs> Why don't you borrow the money from Scott? Nah, with Scott, that kind of money ain't borrowing money. It's betting money. You so why don't I bet it? Why don't I bet him a thousand or something? You would bet, Sky Master. Sure, I ain't scared. Provided I can find a bet where there's no possibility of losing. He likes crazy bets, though. Like which piece of sugar a fly will land on, or how far you can kick a piece of cheesecake. <laughs> cheesecake, that's it. Boys, I want you to go down to Minnie's restaurant and ask how much cheesecake and how much strudel they sold yesterday. How much cheesecake, how much strudel? Why is that? Doesn't matter, just go! Adelaide's coming. If she knows we're running the crack game, because she'll never set foot on me again. <laughs> Hello, Nathan, dear. Ah, don't <laughs> you go ahead, Goyles, order me a tuna fish on rye, a chocolate sundae with extra ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay, Adelaide. We've got to get back to the hot baths. You're still rehearsing? Yeah. That slave driver Charlie has been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. And he says, you don't want to get something to eat. You just want to eat that cheap bum named in Detroit. So what'd you say to him? I told him, I says, I'll meet whoever I want. <laughs> well, don't upset yourself. How's your cold? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Nathan, happy anniversary. A present. I hope you like it. A bell. Read the top. Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly, so put this belt around your belly. <laughs> That's so sweet. Oh, uh, listen, about your present. I was going to get you a, a diamond wristwatch. With a gold band and, and two rubies on the side. Oh, I didn't mean you should have! That's all right. I did it. I'm sorry. That's all right. I kind of like it when you forget to get me present. It makes me feel like we're already married. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. One day we'll be playing, you'll have more meat than a minute. Nathan, I can do without anything. Just so long as you don't stop running that crap game again. The crap game! What an absurd thought. Oh, fine, fine, still dancing in the hot box. 
I uh, suppose one of these days you two are be getting married. We all gotta go sometime. <laughs> no, Nathan, we can fight it. Guys like us, Nathan, we gotta remember that no matter how pleasant the doll's company may be, it always takes second place to ace it back to back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, you wanna stop by Minnie's? We could grab a piece of cheesecake or strudel or something. No, I think I'm gonna check the late results. Oh. Uh, but you will admit that uh, Minnie has some of the best cheesecake in the country. Yes, I'm uh, quite partial to Minnie's cheesecake. Offhand, which do you think he sells more? It's strudel or cheesecake? Mm -hmm. I never really gave him much thought, but if most people are as I am, I'd assume that Mindy smells more cheesecake. How much? Huh? For how much? Why, Nathan, I never you know you to be the betting man. You should like to take your percentage off the top. Well, I thought for old time's sake I'd give you a little action. I'll bet you a thousand bucks that yesterday Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake. Now, Nathan, let me tell you a story. Oh. When I was a young lad about to go off into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. He says to me, son, the old man says, as I am not able to bank while you off to a very large start, before I have to put potatoes into you, I will stake you with some very valuable advice. Now, one day on your travels, a man is going to come up to you and show you a brand new deck of cards, which the seal is not yet broken. This man is going to bet you he can make the jack of spades jump out and squirt cider in your ear. Now, son, do not take this bet. For as sure as you stand there, you will wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan, I'm not to be presuming that you've been clocking me these cheesecakes. You don't think. However, I will bet you the same thousand that uh, you do not know the color of the necktie you have on. <laughs> well, no bet. Blue, what a crazy color. <laughs> Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore. Yo, talk. Hiya, Sky. How are you, fellows? Not bad. Nice and nice and thank you. Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore and she said we brought my hot box and we'll do it. Uh, yes, dear. Oh, I mean, yes. Yes, dear. <laughs> That's husband talk if I have ever heard it. Nathan, in Adelaide, you have a doll that is very difficult to unload. I don't want to. I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And besides, a uh, guy without a doll? Well, if a guy doesn't have a doll, who will holler at him? A doll's a necessity. <laughs> I'm not putting the rap off dolls, Nathan. I'm saying that they have a rap when a guy wants them. And that they're easy to find. You're not dolls like Adam. Figure and wait for age. All dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then uh, why don't you have a doll? Why are you going to invent them that one? I like to travel light. If I was to bring a doll along, there's a large assortment available. <laughs> Not real high price. Any doll. You may. Any doll. Not me. We got that. We got a thousand bucks. That if I have a doll, you can take it to a bed. You know yourself a bed.
between midnight and dawn. <laughs> you might even have an all-night crusade against the devil. A very good suggestion indeed, Brother Master Sam. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <coughs> Fine old gentleman. I suppose she sort of looks after you. We look after each other. So where one goes, the other comes along? Yes, of course. Of course. Here are two of our pamphlets that I would like you to read. They will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And I'll be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting, which I'm sure you will wish to attend. I'm sure. Miss Sarah, I hope you do not think I'm getting out of line, but it does me a great deal of comfort to see a pretty doll, I mean, nice lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others. But uh, stay in this place. You ever go anywhere, do anything, travel or something? I would like to go to Africa. Africa? That's pretty far away. There, there are many other wonderful places just a few hours from here by plane. Have you ever been in a plane? No. Oh, it's wonderful. Here is another pamphlet that I think you should read. Thank you. Of course, I will need uh, personal lessons. My heart's as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. I'll be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. I need private lessons. Why don't you have dinner tonight? I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry, just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. <laughs> hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? It's not Proverbs. It's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. Sorry. No peace under the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 22. Isaiah? Isaiah. Two things been in every hotel room in this country. Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You read the Bible 12 times? What's wrong with the Bible? In my line of work, the most strange information often comes in handy. I once went five G's off a par left, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> well, tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, I is a sin. <laughs> Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five if another will follow. You need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Let's be honest. This mission is laying an egg. I bet you I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. <laughs> What's this big meeting of yours, Thursday? I guarantee to fill this place with 12 genuine sinners. I also guarantee they will sit and listen to you, too. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. <laughs> Here. What's this? That's Sky Masterson's marker for 12 genuine sinners. Ask anybody in the town, it's good. I owe you 12 genuine sinners. I'll uh, pick you up tomorrow around noon. <coughs> At noon. So it took us a while to get there. To get where? My favorite restaurant, of course. And where is that? El Cafe Cubana. In Havana. El Cafe Cubana, Havana. Well, where do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? <laughs> Havana. What's the matter? The plane gets us there in five hours and back the same night. And the food there is delicious. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, that when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sarah, that no matter how beautiful a sergeant may be, she's still a sergeant. Please, go away. Why not change your pitch, Sarge? Come, one and all to the mission. Except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Except me. I'm glad it knows just me personally, not all guys out there. I'm glad that there's one somewhere that might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy would be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not concerned with what he will not be, what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. <clears throat>
Because she ain't the kind of doll that goes to a bed. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's how I know I'm going. <laughs> don't be so sure. It ain't a horse. It's a doll. But Joey... There'll be no kid here tomorrow until I get marked down. All right. Look, I have to meet Adelaide at the hot dogs. Is it okay if I at least tell the guys it's going to be at your place tomorrow? Not until I get my down. Yes. All right, go get it. Bye. Bye. I hope you get stabbed by a stupid baby.
decide if she's following the tariff. And you should have seen her. She gave him a look that could call the moose at me. As long as, long as he doesn't take the doll to Havana. To Havana? He couldn't even take her to New Russia. Where is Nathan? He should be lining up the game. I don't know. I suppose he's with Adelaide. She's at seventh again. That and Miss Adelaide always taking his mind of honest work. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that such a smart businessman like Nathan has to go and fall in love with his own fiance. <laughs> Benny, that's his weakness. And we must be tolerant. I hear it's a worldwide weakness. Look! What's playing at the Rocky? I'll tell you what's playing at the Rocky. I'll picture about a Minnesota man so loved with a Mississippi girl that he sacrificed everything and moved all the way to Biloxi. That's what's playing at the Rocky. What's in the Daily News? I'll tell you what's in the Daily News. A story about a guy who brought his wife to small for people that otherwise would have been you you news. That's what's in the Daily News. Good morning, General. Good morning, Sarah. 
There's something I have to talk to you about. Won't you come inside? Have some lunch with us. No, thank you, darling. I have some more to call for me. Sarah, we at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We're closing down this branch of commission. Oh, no! Close the mission! The general, please! Someone can do good here, even if I can't. Sarah, there are so many other stuff, several other calls upon us. So many other places where our work is really needed. But we're doing much better now. Yes, we've announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting? But oh, will anyone come? Will anyone be here? Excuse me, General. I couldn't help overhearing. My name is Scott Masterson, former center. How do you do? How do you do? I'd like to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Mr. Sarah can do great work soon. I'm glad that you say that, but I'm not concerned. Dollar will get you ten. What? <laughs> May I make a suggestion? That uh, big meeting Thursday night. Why don't you come? Don't you think that would be a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance. General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
smoker, it's over. And you're still the champ. Are you okay? Am I okay? Ask me how do I feel? Washed 
Thank you. 
<laughs> you saw what happened last night. They gambled in our mission. Someday they'll be Look at Scott Masterson. He came seeking refuge. He came seeking me. Did you know that? Are you kidding? I knew that the moment he started picking on you. I just didn't know you'd get so stuck on him. Oh, get over it. Why would you want to get over it? It isn't pneumonia. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him enough, he will not be a gambler. Sir, dear, I've always taken care of you, and all I want is for you to be happy.
crap. We had enough. Let's go home. Uh, you see, Big Jewel, the boys are quite fatigued from playing crap so long. Twenty-four hours almost. I do not care who is tired. I am down 25 G's, so nobody leaves. Uh, uh boys, <laughs> I'm beginning to understand Big Jewel's logic here. It's not that he's a uh, sore loser. It is uh, just that he prefers to win. Isn't that yeah. right, Big Jewel? Yeah. Give it a dice. I'm shooting 500. Take 200. I'm half dead. If you do not shut up, Big Jewel will read the other half. Okay, guys.
11. I win. Well, that cleans me. Now I will play with you guys. Uh, oh, Lord. Wait a minute, Big Joel. You gotta give me a chance to get even. I'll play. Except this time, we'll use my dice. All right, Detroit, that seems fair. But tell me, what are you gonna use for money? I'll use my marker. You expect Big Joel to put cash? Nathan done it? Sure I've done it. What kind of deal is this anyway? No, 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 Nathan. Calm down. Him and his no spot dice. Somebody ought to knock the spot straight off of him. Nathan, don't make Big Joel have to do something to you. Yeah, I am on my vacation. <laughs> go ahead, shoot me, put me in cement. At least I know where I am. Here I go, risk my neck to sell the crap game. I even promised to get married on account of it. And for what? Look how I end up. Broke in a sewer! Believe me, my tough friend from Chicago, there's nothing you could do that would not cheer me up. Here they are. Hello, gentlemen. Well, fresh blood. You guys looking for some action? No, I just want to talk to some of you guys. We ain't talking. We're shooting crap. I don't only need one moment. We are shooting crap. It's about Miss Sarah Brown's mission. Say, who is this guy anyway? It's that fellow I was telling you about. Took a missing doll to Havana. Oh, I get it. Look, fella, why don't you go back to your praying tomato? You're slowing up the action around here! <laughs> You're looking for some action. Would you care to make a wager on a proposition? What's the proposition? From a left hand and a right hand. Now, how would I know a thing like that? I'll give you a clue. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Listen, you guys. Tonight, in the Sing a Soul mission, 409 West 49th Street, they're having a big prayer meeting. Now, uh, I promise I will deliver them some sinners. When it comes to sinning, you guys are high up among the paint cards. I know when we waste no evening in a hallelujah joint. If you will not do it for me, do it for yourself. I promise you the air down here is much worse than the air up there. Maybe it wouldn't have hurt to learn something else besides the odds of making up for the hard way. You've been reading the Bible too much. Yeah. What's wrong with the Bible? Maybe it doesn't read as lively as the scratch sheet, but it's at least twice as accurate. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, not I try. I'll see you around, Nathan. Oh, uh, Scott. Um, I regret to inform you that I uh, do not have the money to pay you right now. Don't worry about it. You won. I won? But I thought you took a doll to a van. You thought wrong. See you around. See you, Sky. All right, Big Jewel, get up. I have the money to play you now. Except this time, we'll use my dice. Nothing to do it. With those dice, you cannot make a pass to save your soul. What did you say? I said with them dice, he cannot make a pass to save his soul. Maybe I can make a pass to save his soul. And yours, and yours, and yours, and his. Maybe I can make the pass to save all your soul. I'm going to roll the dice. I'll bet you a thousand dollars against your soul. One thousand cash against the mark for your soul. Is that okay? Let me get this straight. If you lose, we each get a thousand dollars. But if you win, you show up at this Mission Dollars Cabaret. If I win, you show up to the Save a Soul Mission. One me. Okay, bye, man. Buy me too. You too, Nathan. Me? I'm not even sure if I have a soul. Gotta have one somewhere. <laughs> All right. How do you spell soul? S O. All right. Put down your mark. Give me the dice. Give me room. <laughs> That was Mary Sky, turning chicken. You see me roll for a hundred G's. This time I got a little more than dough right on this.
a big deal, you gave you marker, and if you will, it would cause me no little embarrassment. I'm sure you did not wish to cause me embarrassment. If anyone in Chicago finds out I went to a prayer meeting, <laughs> no one will speak to me. <laughs>
failed. I've spoken to these people day after day, but my words just haven't reached them. Welcome, brothers. Welcome. Uh -huh. Welcome to the mission. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Uh, welcome to the Sam's Soul Mission. Thank you for being here Is everybody here? Where's Nathan and Troy? Present. Who you are, Miss Sarah? Twelve or more assorted sinners. Sorry, sorry we didn't have time to pick them up. Won't you gentlemen sit down? Uh, sit down, all of you! I would like to welcome you all to the same soul mission. Ooh. Hey. Come on, you guys, this is a mission. It isn't Roseland. I do not expect you for you to indulge yourself in any indecencies. <laughs> now, I am two points west of here, so I am appointing Nathan Detroit as my major donor. Now, uh, Nathan, if anyone does not conduct themselves according to oil, they will answer the sky mattress in person, and that means in person. So, you all heard him? Sister Abigail? Your dice. We are honored. Tonight, the meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Cartwright. How wonderful to see our mission grace with all these people on the center. Now, who would like to see a testimony? Who would like to get the ball rolling? <coughs> Come, brother. Speak the testimony that deepens your heart. Bad. I ain't no stool pigeon. <laughs> Come on, Benny. Tell me what a bum you are. <laughs> well, I was a really bad guy. And a gambler. But I ain't gonna do that no more. I thank you. Don't you feel better now? I'm all right. Anyone else? Big Jewel. <laughs> well, I used to be bad when I was a kid, but ever since then I've gone straight. As I can prove by my record, 33 arrests and no convictions. <laughs> How are the wolves? Harry? No. Harry? Well, Stars only as struck souls. Well, like, stars only as struck souls. Sam Masterson. I beg your pardon. Eagles and thousands of against our souls. Eagles and thousands of against our souls. That's why we're here. I don't think I understand. I give general. Eagles and thousands of souls. They're only here. They're only here because Sam Masterson won them in a dice game. That was wonderful. This whole meeting was resolved gambling. How wonderful. This whole meeting is all damn Sergeant Sarah, you have done remarkable work. Sergeant Sarah, you have done wonderful work here. Sergeant Sheila? <laughs> hey, I ain't been my testimony. Hey, I ain't been my testimony. That when Sarah was holding us for our soul, I said, that when Sarah was holding us for our soul, I 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 was
nicely passing out the whiskey, but the passengers were bound to resist. Well, the people said you went.
on a minute. I'm waiting on the lieutenant. Nathan, come on. We're waiting for you. <laughs> Nathan, come on. We're getting married. Look, Nathan, this is what, this is what I'm going to have you make it. So we have to look this in Champion. Nathan, come on. Gee, Adelaide, you sure picked the busiest time of day. Let's go. Where's the wedding? Holy smoke. What's the matter? I forgot to get a place for the wedding. Oh, Nathan. <laughs> How about the billboard brought? <laughs>
our school board members, our administrators, our superintendent of schools, many of you who are out there this evening, please stand and be acknowledged for all of the great love and support that you give this program. Santina, I know you're there. In. I'm not sure that they did, but they are our best buds, our best friends, and are always here for us. So please, a round of applause. <laughs> Behind those walls and back here in the wings are our stage crew. Come on out, guys. of 
of the shows that I've had the pleasure of directing here at Glasgow. My husband, Tom Weaver, please sit down. Enjoy it all. Thank you all very much.